Thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Vulcan Report. This end of day, end of week report is for trading on Friday, August the 19th, 2016. Taking a look here at gold and how it performed, for the most part, flat. Flat market, uh, a lot of up and down, but going absolutely nowhere. Momentum uh, is pointing up to end the week but not a lot of volume not a lot of action just bullish it's holding it's like an arm wrestler it's like a champion arm wrestler and this champion arm wrestler has enough power to hold the other player off the player can't really move his arm up or down and they're just like at a standoff nothing can happen but the champion is Investing him just by an inch or two, you know what I mean. So that's that's what's happening. It's leaning, you know, it's flat, but it's green, so it's leaning to more positive momentum, and that's what you want to see uh, when you are long in a market like gold. You don't want to see um, a lot of weakness in the sideways movement. You want to see more green on the screen because then that provides more energy so when it breaks out to the upside it really 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 explodes and that's what you want so there's an old saying uh, that you never short a dull market and I must say this market has been pretty dull this week um, you know up up ten dollars down ten dollars up ten dollars you know it's just up down up down and going absolutely nowhere and we'll take that for those that are long gold, we'll, we'll take that because that signifies to us that we can expect uh, higher prices going into next week. Now, looking at where we performed, uh, came within a tick basically, or two, technically, yeah, came within like two ticks or, or what have you of getting filled on the long side. So didn't quite didn't quite feel that long, and because I didn't really have a uh, rally or a crash alert on this one, you know, we were pretty much you know just holding the positions, not really paying too much attention to it. Um, as far as on on the flip side, no uh, sell short signals got triggered uh, in the gold, so it's just flat, holding steady, and going nowhere. And we look and see what happens next week. Switching our focus now over to the equity side of things, looking at the GLD, pretty much the same story here, but again, staying afloat, managing not to uh, trigger any shorts, which is exactly what you want to see in a bullish trending market, especially where there's really no real sign of uh, weakening or you know any technical uh, situation going on and that's what you want you, you want to see healthy uh, pullbacks when they come but you don't want to see these uh, flash crashes if you will for no reason they don't need to exist there's no reason to see that and in a healthy market that's what's up so that's what you're seeing here you're seeing that the markets are behaving and acting the way that they're supposed to so moving forward I think that next week sets up really nice to finally uh, break above the 130 price handle get us possibly in toward 135 I just don't think the market's ready for any kind of a pullback yet because when you break it down you really haven't had a really significant run it's just you had a nice move up but it hasn't been anything you know just crazy or anything like that so you you got you got room to build from here uh, on this on this bullish position. Now focusing uh, looking where where the pulse waves uh, had to say about this, we did have a uh, an alert in for this week. We had, we had a, uh, a I like to call it a soft crash alert. Um, a 411 is usually a soft crash alert. A 911 is a hard. Uh, crash alert. This one was a soft one, saying that it's possible that, that pullback was going to come, and we had a uh, a price trigger 
alert all set and ready to go on this one and the market got down to 127.46 did not get low enough to trigger a short so uh, the long position would not uh, have been stopped out in this one so if you're if you're long the GLD which I'm still long the GLD uh, then you're holding the gold position at this point and you're doing you're doing good with it you're not really um, seeing any real price to cave if you will all right, taking a look now at your nugget. Uh, of course, this is, um, you know, your your ultra uh, long position here. If you're trading the nugget, you know that these can see, you know, pretty big swings of volatility, especially in quiet periods. What do I mean by that? Well, for the most part, gold really didn't do a whole lot. But when you take a look at the price action here in the nugget, because it's a leveraged instrument, you see it went from $170.88 down to $145.11. Had you, you know, been a subscriber at the end of last week to the uh, weekly pulse waves, you would have realized a significant uh, profit on your short for uh, in this particular uh, security. Uh, this one had a 911 crash alert um, for this week, and you can see where that crash alert played out to a T. The market, you know, kind of surprises. I I wasn't really expecting too much noise here if, if gold was able to maintain which it pretty much did but you can see here this closed near its lows with downward pointing momentum and increasing volume so it's acting like it wants to come down and, and, uh, and run stops down here to the support of 124.80 alright so it's supported right now at 124.80 Strong support is at 117.41. If the 117.41 is bested, it puts us in line to come down here to the trend line of 100. All right, and that's or really it's 106. So, you know, it would put it at the top of the Kumo cloud on the outside, but you still don't want to usually see a makeup like that in a bullish chart in a strong uptrend. Okay, so I mean, mind you. Your trend lines aren't that away from the Kumo cloud, okay? Um, so we, we take that into consideration. You could see uh, extended, elongated period of consolidation outside of the Kumo cloud, kind of like, you know, being pulled in by gravity from it, you know, extending out a little bit. That's possible. I mean, we'll, we'll run the system. I'll see what happens. Uh, when I plug the numbers in, we'll see what we get. Uh, so just for you that subscribe to the weekly pulse waves, um, go ahead and just you know just be on the lookout for that uh, email from me, letting you know that you can now uh, download your price triggers. Should be ready for you uh, before Monday's open uh, at 9:30. You should have that. I try my best to really get it out before the 6 o'clock p.m. Uh, opening bell for Sunday night because that's when the futures start trading and I know some of you want to uh, get in there and take advantage of what may be happening on the future side of things so I try to get it in there by then so you know we'll see but any, at any rate uh, just know that we it's going to be interesting for Nugget going into next week regardless of what the underlying goal does just keep that in the back of your mind good old Rusty Dusty what can you say about him ticker symbol D-U-S-T Poor, poor thing. It's it's doing nothing and wasting away slowly. A slow, quick death. Uh, hit a low of four dollars and eighty cents. Finally, was able to close. Uh, you know, well off those lows at five forty-three. A lot of people are in this one. It traded over a hundred and seventy-five million shares. So, you know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's it's going to need to really power up just to break the downtrend. It has to close above seven dollars and twenty eight cents next week. And really, to be honest with you, the pulse wave is probably going to be around eight dollars. 
just to say that the down that the the bottom is in it's going to have to get to eight bucks next week close above eight bucks next week i don't care if it's eight dollars and a penny 801 it has to close above eight bucks next week just to put an end to this elongated downtrend this down stretch sideways low slow tricking it's like a, a, a slow dripping faucet that's what this has been and you 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 got some some good momentum ahead of you for next week which would suggest that uh, the gold is going to pull back next week but that's just the bet because as you saw on the last chart there's nothing anything bearish on that chart now there could be uh, some bearish um, underlining current within the price action I won't know that until I run the system and remember what I told you you're not gonna see the algorithms in the chart what you see in the chart is just a picture of the historical price action itself but you're not going to get the true meaning of the price action just by looking at a chart that's what they don't teach you in technical analysis but I teach you that uh, in the trading course so where the stock charts stop that's where I pick up so when I run the algorithms they will let me know if there's a crash alert or rally alert anything like that in the works that we need to be mindful of going ahead for next week alright taking a look now at the gold miners what we have here what do we have here what well, we finally on the GDX started to pull back just a little bit more today uh, we got down to 2966 this week uh, after hitting a high of 3130 all right, so you know, it's not too significant. Market is still extremely supported at 2786 and again at 2856. So that's a nice support range for next week. Hopefully the market can uh, you know, if it's going to pull back, you don't want to see that best that you don't want to get below 2786. You want to see it settle somewhere between 2856 and 2786. That's what you want to see for next week. You don't want to see a close anywhere um, outside of that range. Okay, um, it can close within that range and be just fine, but you don't want to see 2786 taken out. If that's taken out, then it could spike below the uh, trend line support here of 2693 that's this uh, pink m purple magenta looking line here all right if it if this is taken out if this supports taken out then this is definitely going to get you here and you know that would cause a liquidation of longs at that point it would force you to take profit here okay all right thus that would cut into for those of you who are just playing the conservative side of things you it would take your your profits depending on where you got in here um, but your last opportunity was here so you know it would you you would walk away with a couple bucks but not nowhere near what you wanted you walk away with about two bucks but you could have walked away with a lot more had you um, gotten earlier when you were supposed to back when the market was up in here when it was telling you that it was ready to turn so this is the late, this is the late entry for the second leg up. This is your initial leg. This is your second leg, and if this is bested, then it's going to set the stage for a third leg. But you don't know when that's going to come. Can it come here? Will it come over here? But be up here, or come down here and be over here, or is it going to be somewhere down in here? You don't know. So you got to take what you can and give nothing back. All right, that's where that expression comes from. All right, looking at your uh, junior uh, miners here on your gold. Uh, this one, again, the juniors are just looking absolutely fantastic right now. Um, this one's well supported at 44.40 and 45.86. So as long as we don't take out 44.40, we're good. Um, and that's what you want to see. You want to see a settlement somewhere in there next week if that if we're going to end on the bottom side. Uh, but I just don't see any signs of that. I think this is going to break 55 coming up next week, and that's what I'm excited to see. I know momentum is pointing down a little bit, but you can't always 
go by this because it's flat momentum it's in a range this momentum here has not hit a new low so you're not really diverging from price all that much um, there's nothing here it's just flat it's, it's nothing um, so this one's still strong going into next week all right looking at silver now now with silver if you remember me saying I said we, we did have a warning uh, for silver for this week and if you go over to uh, to the blog I did post uh, the technicals for the silver for this week and you can see that there it's plain as day um, $19 and 48 cents um, was what we were looking for on that and to see how much it gave us from that well we did hit a low of eighteen dollars and ninety seven cents there so it did give you roughly fifty cents in the trade there uh, that you would have been looking to protect and defend the market did finally settle at nineteen twenty seven so it did settle um, you know about twenty one cents below the initial entry price so you know it's not giving you you know dollars but it's giving you cents so you would have been able to at least walk away with a small profit there in that being that that is as it is it let it leads me to believe and then you know how we closed um, how the market closed I don't know if there's really too much sign of deeper continuation yeah it could get down to the trend line of 1845 support and then you have another support underneath of that at 1782 but I don't know if that's going to really come into fruition only because we hit oversold today and the makeup of the chart suggests that this may not ha we may not have a continuation next week uh, if anything it could be an inside an inside week setting up for the next breakout above 20 see that's where charting is limited because just by you know if you just go by your eyes it looks like you have an overarching sloping price and coming down and resting somewhere in here but that's not necessarily the case you won't know that without switching over and looking at the algos how are the algos set up you don't see that on the chart that's not going to show you anything on the chart that's what I'm that's what I'm explaining the power of the pulse waves you have to go with the, what the pulse waves are saying price will, will 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 the price action will tell you looking at the market depth and the put call ratios and all of this other jazz it's going to show you the real heartbeat and pulse of this market hence the pulse waves the chart itself is good the indicators on the chart they're great that's great it's a nice tool but you want to know before you put your money and and hit trade <laughs> are you what are the odds of you on the right side of the market period that's that's what you want all right, looking at the cash side of things now on the equity side on the SLV, telling a little bit different story because you actually went out on the lows. All right, SLV kind of went out like a sucker. You know what I'm saying? It went out like a punk. He wasn't able to 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 you know recuperate. Now, I have to say this. You know, I got to keep it real with you. I don't like this chart right now because it's going out on the lows of the day. And as you've heard me say before, equities are far better priced, in my opinion, than the futures in the Forex markets. And there are many factors for that. Um, one of those being is because um, you, you, you generally have a lot better spreads. Um, and because this is a very liquid market, uh, you, you just don't have those other shenanigans that come into play with the forex and the commodity future side of things, um, where you can have you know on the uh, you can have thinner markets. Put it that way. Won't go into all those details now. You know, subscribe to the, the trading room and you'll see me you know do those and show you intraday when things are happening live in the markets and you can see for yourself. But suffice to say, just trust me when I say that the equities are better priced. So that being as it may, this does not look good, boding well for next week for the SLV. You can have a divergence between the SLV and the silver futures for a brief period where this gets weaker and comes down and tests this 1724, <clears throat> excuse me, and that is a possibility. 
Of course, I don't want to see that because I'm holding the SLV. I'm long the SLV, okay? Full disclosure. So we'll see what happens. But I'm not um, being. I'm not shaken out of the trade unless the stop loss is hit. If the stop loss is hit, I'm not married to any security or direction of a security. I will quickly liquidate and get myself short if need be because that's how you play the game. You don't marry to anything. You can quickly divorce from your position at any time for any reason, even if you don't like it, it don't feel right. You just liquidate and look to, um, you know, restructure yourself and reposition yourself back into the market. That's how you trade. That's how you do it. That's how you, that's how you do it like an OG. All right. So on this one, uh, 1867, um, would have gotten you out of the SLV long if you were using the hard stop rule where you strictly, you know, stay with the, the pulse waves on these. Uh, but you know, there's a little secret with trading equities and those of you who are members of the black ops room have heard me say it. Um, you don't have to play hard and fast stop rules of equities unless you're super leveraged and on margin and all this other jazz. So let that marinate for a minute. All right, uh, looking at your uh, miners, SIL, same thing, but a little bit better because it finished right here above the blue trend line. So this one is sitting pretty. Like I said, the miners are doing way better here. And the junior miner fared a little slightly better than even the, the, the big boy. And it finished above the blue line as well. So the miners look real good going into next week. So remember, bulls make money, bears make money, but pigs get slaughtered. So take what you can, give nothing back. Have a blessed weekend.